Hello, welcome to Reed Scholars Live. I am your host, Dr. Mary Fleming, and current president of Reed Scholars. Today, I am joined by Christy Pruitt Haynes. Uh, Christy is originally from Nashville, Tennessee. She wears many, many hats, but she is currently <laughs> president of her own consulting firm, Christy Pruitt Haynes Consulting, as well as founder and chief storyteller, um, truth teller rather, of our truths. She has a quite a diverse experience with organizations like um, Infinity, Memphis Grizzlies, where she leads leadership development, diversity, and strategic planning. When she's not busy consulting or speaking, she spends time at home with her husband, her mother, and her two daughters. Welcome so much. Thank you for joining us today, Christy. You are very welcome. Thank you for having me. So how are you? How are things in Nashville? What have you been doing these past few days? <laughs> Nothing. Um, no, I've, I've been doing a lot. Um, as you know, I am so ready to get out and for the world to open, but such is life right now. So staying busy with work, staying busy, trying to keep everybody in the house sane, which is not easy when you have a teenager who wants to get out. Um, but you know, we're, we're all making it. So luckily my daughter's doing great. My niece is doing great. All the family's good, so I can't complain, but um, I'm ready for some normalcy. <laughs> Aren't we all? The, what we've been yes. saying, you know, the new abnormal, whatever that, whatever we're going back to. So, mm -hmm. um, Well, because of your background, I wanted to spend a little bit of time. So we spend a lot of time on this podcast talking about health equity subjects. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to make sure people understand that health equity is not just about the health care you receive in the medicine context at the, you know, the doctor's office or the hospital yes. or you know where you interface with the clinician that so much of our health is about how we live in our day-to-day -day lives and one of the most important things a lot of people do in their day-to-day -day lives is go to work right yes. um, and so we've seen a lot of um, employers and organizations um, issue statements around um, diversity and inclusion uh, in light of COVID-19 and the uh, uh, health disparities and inequities that it, it highlighted or brought to the surface or to national media attention, however you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you go in and, and work a lot around strategic planning and, and diversity and leadership development in, in organizations. So can you speak a little bit to um, one, you know, from your perspective, why, you know, first of all, why is diversity and inclusion important in the workplace and mm -hmm. in leadership? Um, and then we can kind of go into how do you implement those changes for those people who are really serious about making them? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, I think it is, it's wonderful that there's so many companies right now making these statements and posting things on social media and doing a lot of the sort of performative things that you would want them to do. I think what's more important, though, is to actually have some action behind it. If not, it just feels like they're saying the right thing, but they aren't necessarily backing it up with action. Yes. So as a, as a consultant who focuses a great deal on diversity and equity and inclusion, I'm thrilled that it's top of mind for so many people, but really hoping that it actually permeates into the organization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with any company, there obviously companies are made up of a number of people, a number of departments, and all too often people tend to work with, hang out with, do things with people who are very much like them. Right. And, and for some reason, they don't see many problems with that. But what ends up happening, you know, I have a saying that two heads are better than one, only if those two heads are saying different things. Mm. If not, you just get a louder version of the wrong <laughs> answer sometimes. That's the same thing, right? And yes, and that's what we see in so many companies. Um, we see people who work with people just like them. They live in the same neighborhoods with their coworkers. They went to the same schools. It's a lot of the same. And while there are some benefits to that, you know, it sometimes makes things a little easier. You have less tension you then don't get the benefit of the creativity and you don't get those diverse ideas. Um, the analogy I like to use to really illustrate why diversity is so important is if you think about the game show, and I'm going to date myself a little bit, but who wants to be a millionaire, which mm -hmm. luckily it's back on air right it's now. Right, it's so, back on. You know, it's back yeah, on. We'll, we'll call it brand new as opposed to, <laughs> you know, me being familiar with the original version. But if you think about that game show, you know, one of the 
helps that contestants would get is the phone a friend. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you see people get down to that last question where they may have won $500,000 and they're trying to get to the million and all they have left is their phone a friend. So they're faced with the decision on who do they call in that moment. And the default for so many people, and this is what we see so many organizations do, is they call their best friend or the person they grew up with or went to school with, that sort of thing, because they feel like this person has always had their back and mm -hmm. they have their best interest mm -hmm. at heart, which mm -hmm. is very true. Right. But the downside is if you all were educated together, if you live in the same neighborhood, if you travel together, if you really live very similar lives, they're going to know the same things that you know. Right which means if you don't know something, how likely is it that they <laughs> won't know it? Mm -hmm. So the, the real answer there is to call someone who is your opposite. Call the person who's had a life that's very different than yours because they're going to have information and, and facts and knowledge and experiences that you've never had. So they will be the ones to get you the information and ultimately the answer that you need in that moment. And that's why diversity really matters. You know, I'm not one of those who thinks it's all about holding hands and singing kumbaya. That's right. beautiful, but that doesn't improve an organization. It's really those diverse ideas, diverse thoughts, diverse backgrounds that, that create um, the, the plethora of options and information that every organization needs to move forward. So that's a little about just why it's important and unfortunately, what you oftentimes see is an organization may be very diverse at the lower level. Right. So they may have, you know, every race, every gender, every socioeconomic status represented, but there gets to be this line on the org chart where once you go above that line, again, everybody's thinking and acting in the same way. And you run into those same problems. You run into the the larger or louder version of the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for a company to really benefit from diversity, it has to have, have it at every level and in every department. And I say organizations should look at their org chart, draw a diagonal line, mm -hmm. and at every point on that line, so across every department and at every level, you need to have diverse ideas represented. And that's going to come from race. It comes from gender. It comes from country of origin. It comes from every lifestyle you can imagine. So again, you can really benefit from all of that knowledge. And, and ultimately, the company was going to be more successful because of it. Right. And uh, I, there was an article, and I'm horrible at remembering like what article was where or when, but, um, but recently that was talking about some of the very large companies in this country. And, and to your point, at once you got to the sea level, there was, mm -hmm. there was no diversity, it was all the same. Or the other thing that's happening is because it's catchy, you're having an office for diversity, office for inclusion, and you have one brown person, you know, yes. as the, that department, um, mm -hmm. chief or chair or leader, uh, and no one else. And so- And that's it. Yes, yeah, so it's a great first step, but it can't be the only step. Exactly. Um, so, so my next question, kind of backing up a step four, because um, I know you do a lot of around um, also like coaching and motivating and, and mm -hmm. supporting um, you know, underrepresented minorities and women um, in their uh, leadership trajectory. So for those ladies who are in, in you know, know that they're qualified, know that they're um, capable of these leadership positions, but are mm -hmm. often getting overlooked. How, how do you speak to that? I, I've, I've had a few conversations lately um, one with my cousin Amanda um, mm -hmm. about her frustration in, in the workplace and trying to make sure that she's uh, presenting herself in a way that she's available for promotion, yes. but also not giving so much pushback that that you know we, the, the whole angry black woman thing that we have to contend with. This you don't want to be the angry black woman. Yeah. So, so yes. can you speak to that a, a little bit on how you negotiate that part? Absolutely. And, and unfortunately, that narrative of the angry Black woman exists, you know, throughout so many organizations. There's a, you know, a common sort of belief in this that if a white man says something, he's considered a leader. If a white woman says the same thing, she's labeled as bossy. Mm -hmm. If a Black man says it, he's typically labeled as aggressive and a Black woman is angry. 
but this can be the same statement said in the same way. So the, the situation that you're talking about, it's very real and unfortunately a lot of women and particularly women of color deal with it and face that every day. And because of that, you see a couple of things happening. The first is oftentimes we just stop asking. Mm. And I understand why that is. It's because you're trying to really walk that balancing line of being effective without offending anyone. Mm. But what that ends up doing is we give our voice away. So first mm. and foremost, women have to ask. If there's a position that you're interested in, if there's somebody in the organization that you want to work with, ask. That's the, the first mm. thing, you know, even in negotiating salaries and things like that, there's a real tendency for women, and again, particularly women of color, to not even push that envelope and ask. So that would be the first thing, advocate for yourself. The second thing is find someone within your organization to also advocate for you. So that's a sponsor. And, and there's a little bit of a debate between the difference between a mentor and a sponsor. Mm. But a sponsor is typically someone who has gained access to the rooms that you haven't been admitted to yet. So for example, they may be in the C-suite or they may have you know, gotten over that, that line in the organization. And your sponsor doesn't have to be someone who looks like you. Right. It has to be someone who has the respect of the organization who understands what you're really good at and who's willing to spend their social capital on you. So for example, when they're in a meeting and they hear there's a new position coming up or a new project that's happening, they will be the first to say, hey, you know what? Mary can do this. Amanda can do this. Christy can do this. So really find those relationships and nurture them. And, and sometimes people are a little hesitant to, to even put themselves out there like that. Yeah. But when you're in a company long enough, you can tell the people who would be open to that and just say, hey, can, I, can we have a quick coffee? I just want to talk to you about what it is I'm interested in, where I'd like to see my career going, any advice you have, that sort of thing. You don't have to necessarily directly say, will you sponsor me? Right. <laughs> let them know that you're interested. Right. Let them know that you have these abilities. It's going to naturally occur. Um, and then the final thing is pay attention to the people who are moving up in that organization. Mm. Um, you know, companies have a tendency to say one thing, but then if you look to see who those organizations are promoting, that's what will let you know the traits that they really value. Okay. Yeah. So watch out for that and, and decide, you know, are those traits that you can emulate? And can you kind of model some of that behavior? So sometimes we get so focused on my job is A, B, and C. So I need to make sure I do A, B, and C better than anybody. And that's absolutely a part of it. But you also have to look at those other intangibles, those other qualities. Um, and again, the best way is sometimes to look to see who it is that organization is promoting quickly and start emulating some of those. So those are just a couple of tips and there, there's so many others. But, um, but I think, you know, the biggest thing, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, and, and one other thing from a social standpoint, we have a tendency to talk to those that we are most like and that we're most comfortable with. And I understand why, and that's something everybody does. But so many things in a company happen outside of those traditional work meetings. So find someone you can talk to about their kids playing soccer, or if they have a dog and you have a dog, go talk about their dog. Or if you don't have a dog, make up a dog because they don't know who's actually <laughs> in your house, you know, but find ways to really develop and nurture those relationships that aren't just about work, because that's when you sort of humanize yourself to them. And that's when they, you then become very top of mind and they, they will remember you when it comes time for some of those forward movements within the organization. And, and interesting, I, I think that's what people used to call the water cooler talk, right? You hang out yes, around the water exactly. cooler and, and chit chat mm -hmm. at the coffee machine. And it'll be interesting to see how that evolves as more people are working at home and we don't have as much of that interaction. Um, but yes. I know there are some companies that are doing social hours and they're doing non-work related Zoom meetings to, to try mm -hmm. to foster that. So um, I would echo, you know, making sure that you even if you don't really want to go to the, the work social, go and, yes, and be go. present. And like you said, mm -hmm. understand what other things to talk about. Um, 
just so you're in front of, like you said, front of mind uh, when things come yes. up. And as we, as we kind of, I think a lot of organizations are really deciding if they're going back into the building or if they're mm -hmm. going to continue this remote. And as you said, that does change the nature of things. Honestly, social media becomes even more important. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I know a lot of people who may have two social media pages, one for their friends, where they yeah. can really say what they're thinking, and then one where they connect to their work people um, or, or other professional people or use LinkedIn for that or something like that. So because social media is such a, a huge way of how people interact. Yeah. Um, and I, for one, I'm very hesitant about connecting to people yeah. that I interact with professionally. Yeah. But I have certain pages and certain platforms just for that. So I can still be fully myself over here, but I can show the parts of myself that I need to show over here so I can nurture those, those relationships. Um, one, so transitioning a bit. So we talked about mm -hmm. how to function when you're in someone else's space. But one of the other things you're really good about is creating your own space. So I thought yeah. we'd spend a little bit of time talking about our truth. So just people kind of know um, what it is and what prompted you to develop that and what your hope for it as you continue to grow um, the organization. Thank you. So this is, um, this is my baby. Mm -hmm. This is something that I am very passionate about for a number of reasons. So our truth is an organization for about and by black women. And it's really designed to both educate, inspire, and amplify the Black woman. So what I mean by that is we'll have blog posts and podcasts and all types of content to really educate and provide information and resources for Black women. Um, we're going to have a coaching session where Black women can come and be coached by another Black woman. And that will give them the opportunity, as I put it, to kind of start the conversation in the middle. Mm -hmm. So for example, yeah. if if I come in and say to my coach, you know, I walked into this meeting, we all had the same title. And as soon as I walked in, they asked me to be the one to take notes. Mm. I won't have to explain why that bothered me because she will already get it. So we can kind of get to that action point a little quicker. Um, and then we're going to amplify. We're going to have both the Speakers Bureau and a publishing house because, you know, speaking is something I do a lot of. And I just got tired of being the only person who looked like me on stages. And I got tired of my phone ringing off the hook during February. <laughs> we could talk about Black history, right. but then the other 11 months of the year really having to work. So I wanted people to, to really understand we have the ability to talk about everything from medicine to finance to psychology to leadership, you name it. And there are highly qualified, highly engaging and educated Black women prepared to speak. So I wanted to create something where event planners and meeting planners could easily come and say, this is what we're looking for, who do you have? Um, and, and ironically, and we have our full website launch coming up very, very soon, literally just a few days from now. But, and Mary, I don't know if you even know this, but the thing that, that really prompted me to start our truce and where the, the idea was born without me even really knowing it was um, I went for a weekend with seven of my closest friends. And the eight of us, you know, had this phenomenal weekend. And, and the part that I talk about in one of the blogs, one of the first blogs that people will see on our website is when the idea was first presented, my first thought was, eh, that's a whole lot of estrogen in one building. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that. Yeah. Um, but I went and it was, it was everything that I needed. I mean, we laughed, we cried, we planned, we had fun, we drank, we did all the things that you're supposed to do. But what it really made me fully understand is the power and the strength of being surrounded by women who understand your life and who want to see you excel. Mm. So our truths is really my kind of it's me paying honor to what I felt that weekend and me trying to provide that same experience to black women across this country, because it's what we need. And we need a place to go and be ourselves and be energized and be reminded of what we're capable of. Um, and then have all of our greatness kind of amplified to everyone else. So I am extremely excited about it. Um, I hope everyone will, will kind of join us on this journey and follow everything that we're doing. I'm excited. And I think, uh, I mean, to your point, there's something 
we talked about you know diversity earlier, which is very important, but it's also mm -hmm. um, the uh, the opposite part about being reaffirmed. And so yes. when things are really tough, when you're in um, very stressful, or emotional, emotionally charged, or just physically draining uh, days at work, um, mm -hmm. there are, you need the opposite of of that pour back in, that that lifting up and that affirmation. Yes. Um, and so I think for most of us, it's trying to find that balance. You know, where is it? Um, mm -hmm. But you're, you're providing an avenue to help us to find that. So I'm excited. And of course, Thank you, know, you. I'll be following along and with. <laughs> yes, yes, you are very much a part of it. So, you know, we, we are excited. And, and as you said, I think that's where a lot of the health piece comes in. And that pouring back in, that's, that's a huge part of self-care. And it's what we need to go out and face the world another day. So well, I'm super excited about it. Um, I think that is a great place to end. So um, thank you so much for joining us. It was great conversation. Um, I don't know, you have any parting words or anything um, you want our listeners to know um, on how to, you know, be productive and, and go forth on their leadership journeys? Yes. So I, um, you know, I think first, if you are at a company, where you, it's just obvious you aren't being valued, you aren't being nurtured, and you mm -hmm. don't see that changing, decide if that's the place for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are always times where I've taken jobs where I knew this was a resume builder. Mm -hmm. I needed this title on my resume, so it was worth it not being everything that I needed to be, but I also knew that was for a finite amount of time. Um, so, so just try what every position and what every organization is for you and then be very self-aware about what it is you want and what it is you need in a company and in a position and really look for those. Talk to your friends about where they are and how their experience is and hold your companies accountable. Mm. We provide a tremendous value, tremendous, you know, intellect to so many organizations and, and sometimes it's just a matter of reminding them, you know, that, that social media post was great, but when I look at our board and our sweet suite and all of that, I still don't feel like I, am, I belong here. So what can we do to change it? And, and really, you know, be okay kind of holding their hand through that change if that's what it takes. But, um, but do what you have to do to really create the professional life you want to create for yourself. I like it. So be true to yourself and hold yes. others accountable. Absolutely. Very well. Well, thank you so much. Um, yes, it was you're a welcome. Thank you. And I'm sure thank I'll you. see you soon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening to Reese Powers Live. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or subscribe to our YouTube channel.